Elizabeth, we'll start with you. You've called Alberta a black hole for restrictions on pesticides. Why is that? Well, um, over 80% of Canadians are now protected by pesticide bylaws, which prevent use of lawn chemicals just to kill dandelions, so cosmetic or ornamental uses. But we don't have a single bylaw in Alberta. Not a single town or city has a law yet. So cities of a comparable size elsewhere across the country? That's right, almost all the large cities in Canada plus. It all started in Quebec uh, 20 years ago in Hudson when Dr. June Irwin um, got worried about children coming in with symptoms from playing on lawns treated for dandelions, just sprayed. They had diarrhea, vomiting, um, rashes. So she started investigating it and went to every council meeting for six years and brought questions for the councillor. So that's how it all began. Now, Nigel, efforts have been made to bring in bans in, in for sure in Calgary, and I think it's still underway in, in Edmonton. Um, why, why, in your opinion, are pesticides necessary? Well, I think that um, uh, we will acknowledge there's a lot of communities in, in Canada that have gone the way of, of banning pesticides, but we believe they've done, them for the, done it for the wrong reasons. And um, pesticides have their place um, whether it's in agriculture or in the urban environment. And they are necessary at times. Uh, we certainly agree with those who um, think that perhaps they've been overused in the past, but there's new technologies, new, new techniques, and there's, there's new products on the marketplace. And particularly here in Alberta, uh, we face some really harsh climatic conditions. And uh, there are times when we need to use those products. And... Um, we're quite confident in, in the science that's behind them to say that they're, they're perfectly safe to use. Okay, uh, Paul, we'll, we'll turn it to you. In Alberta, we have the Weed Control Act. Mm -hmm. And uh, just last year, the list of prohibited plants grew from, from 7 to 46. Yes. Um, are pesticides necessary to keep that long list under control? Well, those, that list of uh, 46 prohibited noxious are plants that are not found in Alberta. And we're trying to keep them out of Alberta. So basically, you know, when they do show up, uh, yes, to have a, a, a proper pesticide to control them would be fairly important. Um, so, but we do also have a list of 23 noxious weeds. That do exist in Alberta. That do exist in the province. And those are the ones that are, um, you know, we look at control options that include integrated pest management um, and, and when needed, the use of pesticides. So in, in the grand scheme of things, where does this come most into play? Is it, is it with municipalities? Is it with individual homeowners? Is it with the agricultural community? Well, the, the Alberta Weed Control Act um, says that every landowner in Alberta is responsible for controlling weeds on their property. So that would go from anybody from a homeowner to a municipality or a, a city or a county um, to... Uh, parks and, and uh, recreational areas. So everyone's responsible for controlling weeds on those properties. Um, and you know, and we, we um, recommend that they use the best method possible to control. Enforcement is actually delegated down to local authorities. So uh, counties, cities, towns um, appoint weed inspectors and they ensure that control happens when it's needed. Okay, so we've established some parameters around, around what weeds are, are out there, what we want to ban, uh, some thoughts as well on the use of pesticides. What is it, though, that you're advocating for, Elizabeth, um, in terms of legislation? Yeah, really, it's, uh, our approach is just cosmetic use. So it's um, use by parks in the city, use by homeowners just to treat their lawn for ornamental reasons, not to reduce weeds that have been legislated but to reduce, you know, why not have a few broad-leaved herbs in your lawn? You know, dandelions, clover, the local jackrabbits love clover, plantain. Uh, more biodiversity is probably healthier in the long run than trying to have a monoculture of, of uh, grass. And there are, as we will discuss, a lot of health concerns with the chemicals that are we, being we used. We will indeed. We'll come back in the second segment and talk about that. But it, would a legislation of that sort, Nigel, be feasible? Oh, well, I think that um, any, any legislation could be feasible, but I think we have to make a decision of, as to why is it necessary in the first place. And I'm going to strongly disagree with Elizabeth about using this term cosmetic. 
Um, we don't use any pesticides whatsoever for cosmetic purposes. Um, it's, it's a term that's been used by those who are proponents of ban to try and separate certain products uh, that we use our, in our urban environments, say from agricultural products. Right. In, in, in regard to cosmetic use, um, I think there's this misconception that the products are used to enhance the, how a lawn grows or how green it is. That's the function of fertilizer and water and, and sunlight. We, we need to use pesticides such as weed killers to stop weeds invading those, our lawns because if we allow weeds to get out of control, they will take over a lawn. Uh, and that doesn't matter if it's in a boulevard, in somebody's home lawn, or in a park, there has to be a certain level of control. But there's other methods besides the use of, of herbicides. And, and I think that what we have to understand is that um, in the urban environment, we, we do have um, cultural ways that we can control weeds. So pesticides, hopefully we're using them, you know, sort of as a last resort. But to take away the opportunity to control weeds, um, I, I don't think is, is the place for legislation. One quick thought on that before we go to break. Well, I was just going to say that there is extensive experience with organic turf care to make it look beautiful without using pesticides, and we just not need to draw on those skills. Okay. Well, maybe talk about some more alternatives when we come back as well after the break. All the all-important health issue. Uh, do pesticides, in fact, pose a risk? We also want to hear from you. Should municipalities in our province go pesticide-free? Tell us what you think. Follow the contact links at albertaprimetime.com or our panel after the break. It gets into the air that we breathe, uh, and it's unhealthy for the wildlife. So I would say I'm all for it. Yeah, if they're cancerous, we don't want them everywhere, right? But obviously they cause some good, that's why we use them. I think there should be a, a, a zone inside that you might be able to, but uh, if you're bordering right on agriculture, uh, the residents are going to lose out. Got to kill a weed somehow, right? So like, if you don't have pesticides, things get out of hand. So my answer to that would be no. So some interesting thoughts there from Albertans on the push to ban pesticides. Uh, we heard in there, Elizabeth, the, the reference to health. Mm -hmm. And do, wildlife. And wildlife as well. Mm -hmm. Do the pesticides pose a, a health risk in your opinion? Oh yes, I think they pose a health risk. There's, if you go to the health authorities in Canada, doctors, nurses, the Canadian Cancer Society, they um, are all for pesticide bylaws to reduce exposure of Canadians, especially children, to um, the health effects of pesticides. So are there documented cases? Is there, is there direct evidence links. linking? There's strong links shown between uh, especially farm workers and incidents of cancers such as lymphomas, um, organ cancers, um, prostate cancer, brain cancer. Um, there's lots of literature on the web about it. Yeah. Nigel, your thoughts on that? Well, I, I don't disagree that we, we shouldn't be using products that uh, cause health problems or are detrimental to wildlife. But in Canada, we have um, an agency called Health Canada. And it's the agency, this is the agency that regulates and puts into place science-based reviews as to the effectiveness of these products and are they good for the environment, are they safe for human health. And we have, I think, probably one of the world's best regulatory agencies. And they've, they've made it very clear that the products we use on our lawns um, have caused them no concern. And so I'm, we're really puzzled why the advocates who, who propose bans don't listen to what Health Canada says to us, because they're the agency. Uh, a lot of the advocacy groups uh, use um, outdated reports, uh, a lot of misinformation and so I would really you know there's there's certainly a lot of information on the internet but a substantial amount of it is, is incorrect so if if people want to learn about the products about pesticides I think Health Canada is the authority that we need to listen to. Uh, Paul provincially the Alberta government is responsible for health but in this instance it's deferred to Health Canada? 
That's correct. Yeah, pesticides are regulated in Canada by Health Canada, and more specifically, the Pesticide uh, Management Regulatory Agency. Um, and they, they're responsible for the Pest Control Products Act, under which all pesticides are regulated. So uh, no pesticide in Canada is sold uh, without being tested uh, and found to be safe for, for human health, for the environment. Um, and um, Health Canada assures us that as long as they're used according to label directions, uh, they're safe to use. So um, Alberta Agriculture supports uh, Health Canada's point of view on that. Elizabeth? When used as directed... Nigel brought up some opposition yeah. to what you had to say. Yes. I think one of the problems is that often homeowners um, don't take the time to read all the tiny fine print and they don't protect themselves. Perhaps they spray on a day when it's got a little bit of wind and the pesticide drifts to their neighbor and then the neighbor's dog gets it on their paws or the children bring it in the, and it lasts for a long time within homes. So I think perhaps... Um, the risk is not acceptable to a lot of Canadians and that's why we have provincial laws in Ontario, Quebec, probably soon BC, Nova Scotia and 170 municipalities that have pesticide bylaws. Before the break we, we brought up very briefly the, the uh, idea of maybe alternatives and we'll go to a Facebook message now from Andy who writes, what we need to do is go harmful pesticide free. There are plenty of natural source pesticides that are non-toxic to our environment and to our food. Uh, Nigel? Oh, I, I agree. I think there's, there's, there's a lot of products out there that are what are called lower risk products. Um, but regardless of, of how they work, they're all called pesticides. I, I don't think we, need to, we can't lose sight of that. But some of the products, um, absolutely, they, they work very well, uh, particularly around, around homes and um, smaller, smaller yards. It's when we get into the larger areas, such as, muni as municipal parks, um, on boulevards, um, sports fields, it becomes quite cost prohibitive to be using some of these uh, lower risk products. Uh, and they take a lot longer of, uh, to, to act um, on, on the weeds. Um, but, but certainly there's, there's alternatives and there's lots of cultural practice we can use. We're not advocating the, um, you know, sort of every time you see a dandelion you have to grab for a, a bottle of weed killer. Uh, but I think what, what industry looks for, I think what agriculture looks for, is the ability to have those products in the toolbox when they're needed. And the fact that Health Canada has said that the products we're using don't pose a risk, then I don't, I don't think that there, there's really an issue around the pesticides as the way some people would, would suggest. Paul, is, a, is an outright ban on pesticides feasible? Could we see it in our lifetimes? We may, I guess. It, it is um, feasible, I guess. We've seen it in, in Quebec and in Ontario where they've had a cosmetic ban. Um, certainly from an urban point of view, um, it is possible. From an agricultural point of view, it would be a lot more difficult. Definitely, agriculture relies pretty heavily on pesticides to keep the crops clean and to uh, maintain those high yields that um, bring good, good returns back to the farmer. So um, pesticides are pretty important to the agricultural community. So, Elizabeth, it looks like we need a balance. Mm. We do need pesticides maybe to a certain degree but maybe we should also be keeping an eye out to health and can, I think it's can a we great find idea that balance to explore what's already happened with organic turf care and and reduction of chemicals in other ways for instance in um, New York they did a five-year study of sports fields and found that um, over that time the costs of turf care dropped 26 percent using just organic methods so that means building up your soil with more compost and better nutrition and um, and overseeding and other ways to make the turf happy without having to use pesticides. Herbicides is what I'm actually referring to. Last word to you, Nigel. Can that balance be found? Oh, I think there's, there's always a balance. Uh, and I think uh, our, our industry has made, or the landscape industry has made great strides in the last 10, 15 years. New technologies have come in. Uh, the manufacturers of the products have put um, new lower risk products uh, into the marketplace. And so I think that, um, that the balance has been struck. Um, I, I, with, with an industry that's sort of reliant on these products, um, we're very conscious of how people 
I guess, perceive our products, and uh, we do use them with, with great care. Well, you've certainly all given us food for thought as municipalities in our province look at uh, possible bans. Thank you kindly. Thank you. Thank you. Nigel Bowles is Executive Director of Landscape Alberta Nursery Trades. Elizabeth Beaubien is with the Pesticide Free Edmonton Coalition and Paula Flam heads up the Pest Surveillance Branch with Alberta Agriculture.